Hi, what's up and welcome to the Pixar YouTube channel. My name is Matilde and if you've been subscribed for a while, you may remember this video where I broke down the things you need before you start your YouTube channel in 2024. Now, I mentioned in this video that this might start a series on this channel and today I'm here with episode two where I'm gonna break down how you can create the perfect thumbnail for your YouTube videos. As always, I've timestamped everything down below so you can skip through the video if there's specific advice you're looking for. But if there's anything that I didn't mention in this video, feel free to comment it down below or messages on Instagram at Pixar. I am so good with this promo thing. <laughs> so let's get straight into it. So why are thumbnails important? A thumbnail for a video works the exact same way that adverts traditionally do. Things like posters for businesses or posters promoting upcoming sales. It works the exact same way in terms of marketing that you want an audience to see this and be interested in your product, which in the last video I've established when you start a YouTube channel, you're creating a product and you yourself have become a brand. So exact same way, if you want to create a YouTube channel, you need to start thinking of yourself as a brand. How would you market yourself? make that your thumbnail. <laughs> Content on YouTube tends to be rather similar, but what's gonna make you click on one video as opposed to another, even if they have the same title, is thumbnails because I think I personally am team thumbnail is more important than the title. Whilst titles work really well in terms of SEOs, which if you haven't watched my last video where I go into more detail what this is, I'll explain it really quickly now. SEOs, search engine optimization, are basically keywords that are gonna get the algorithm to figure out what your video is about. So for example, if you make a crochet hat tutorial, you'll put this in the title, so then the algorithm knows you're making a crochet hat. Thumbnails, however, the algorithm does not recognize as SEOs because it can't read images. <laughs> so you're free to do whatever you want with it and make it captivating to humans as opposed to an algorithm. Thumbnails are also really important because it kind of conveys the conventions of where your video falls under. Taking again the same example of doing a crochet hat tutorial, you can do thumbnails like this, for example, which are much more formal. And if you click on these videos, you're expecting something more straightforward, just explaining how you make the hats, no type of personality or jokes throughout the video. You just kind of want to know how it's made. To contrast that, thumbnails like these, Again, same video concept. When you click on those, you're expecting more of a personality and getting to know the person behind the camera. These two videos can have the exact same title, but what's gonna make you understand the category it falls under is the thumbnail. Informative, entertaining. Also, thumbnails are super important to convey your aesthetic to an audience. There is absolutely no point in having a video that looks like this, for example, and then having a thumbnail that looks like this <laughs> because that has nothing to do with your video and people that would generally click on this thumbnail would expect something a little bit more ha <laughs> You know? <laughs> so where do you start? Step number one, doing research. In my last video again, I explained what niche and branding is, but again, a breakdown if you haven't watched it. A niche or the branding of your channel is essentially what you're gonna make videos about. If it's makeup tutorials, if it's lifestyle, if it's vlogs, there's generally conventions and types of thumbnails that fall under these conventions for these types of videos. Obviously, that doesn't mean you have to follow these. If you wanna create something new, if you wanna step outside the box, good for you. YouTube needs the originality. But if you're starting off and you're very overwhelmed by the fact that you can literally put anything you want on a thumbnail, I suggest that you just follow the conventions of whatever niche and branding you are trying to follow. For example, again, if you're making vlogs, these types of thumbnails are super popular for kind of teen girl vlogs. However, if you're doing a more cinematic type of vlog, these types of thumbnails might let your audience know a little bit more what your video is about. A super fun tip that I personally always use when I'm making videos is whatever your video is about, let's say you go cafe hopping. You just go on YouTube and you search cafe hopping vlog and whatever videos come up, you can start to generally see a trend in thumbnails. Things like fonts and stickers and all of that, they're gonna change depending on who it is. And I do not suggest that you copy someone's thumbnail picture by picture, but it generally gives you a very good understanding of what people who are looking for those types of videos would want on a thumbnail. And most people don't know this, but there's actually quite a lot of trends within the thumbnail sphere. Something that I think is very noticeable, uh, a few years ago, the it thumbnail for vlogs was something like this. And since Emma Chamberlain has started to go more simplistic, thumbnails like this that are more simple, they're doing super well in the algorithm. So what do you need to include in your thumbnails? First of all, make sure that your sizing is correct. This is the aspect ratio that most YouTube thumbnails follow. If you don't follow this aspect ratio, the thumbnail will still upload, but it will have these really ugly black borders that personally, unless it's something that you're intending to go for, I do not recommend using. Most important thing to include in your thumbnail is an eye-catching photo. If it's a screenshot from your video, that's double the points because then people 
aren't feeling misleading but you can also use pictures that you took the same day that you took that video or anything that's actually to do with the video that you're posting and making make sure that it's your own picture and make sure that it's not very crowded and busy i'll go more into detail about this but it's definitely very overwhelming when there's a billion things going on in one shot because thumbnails are so small if it feels crammed i never click on it number three like i mentioned make sure that you keep your branding throughout this means not only keeping your branding throughout one thumbnail but also across all your thumbnails thumbnails don't all have to be identical but i think similar to an instagram feed there should be some sort of like cohesiveness within your youtube channel if you post a thumbnail like this followed by a thumbnail like this i think people who will watch one video and then go on your channel looking to subscribe might be a little bit put off by the lack of cohesiveness throughout your content the last tip that i have and personally the one that i like to stress more do not clickbait it is so like 2016 to clickbait it's so much more beneficial to you to get less clicks and get a large percentage of the people who did click on that video to subscribe to your channel because that's how you build an audience throughout time if you post a video that's like you'll never believe what happened and then nothing really happens people will kind of feel betrayed and they don't really want to click on that video if you post something like I went to the shops. Maybe less people will click on it because it sounds kind of boring, but the people that click on it, they're more inclined to subscribe because the content's more authentic. If you're still confused on where to start, this is the portion of the video where I show you how I personally edit my own thumbnails and what you can do if you don't really know where to start because it's very overwhelming. Apologies if the lighting has changed. I went to eat some food. And my favorite thing about using Pixar and the reason I've been using them for years is because it auto saves everything that you do. And I personally am someone who always forgets to save things. Another thing that I love about Pixar is that you can go back and forth between using the web version and the phone, tablet, iPad, whatever you want, mobile version of the app. I like to edit on my laptop, but I love to do some drawing on my own thumbnails. So I like to go back and forth between using my iPad and an actual like Apple pen to open up the Pixar website like I am now, the first option that you will see is YouTube thumbnails. When I was talking about aspect ratios being super important, you don't have to worry about that if you use Pixar because you can just click create design and bada bim bada boom. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you how I personally would edit my thumbnails and I edit the thumbnails for the videos that I make on this channel so you guys can kind of see the vibes. Super simple. You don't really have to do much with it and anybody with literally zero knowledge of editing whatsoever can do this. If you really, really are struggling with like the most basic features, when you click YouTube thumbnail on Pixar, it will automatically come up with some templates. So if you scroll through these and there's something that you like, you can just click on it. I really like this layout and I think that could work really well for a thumbnail. So if I was feeling really lazy or or if I didn't really understand how to do any sort of editing whatsoever, I can just click this, delete the background image, look up whatever picture that I think would fit my video. I quite like this one. I could size it up or size it down and then obviously change the title to fit yours. So if this is clearly London, so I'll put London travel vlog and then just center it. There you go, so easy. I'm just gonna go over what I generally do if you want a little bit more of a customization to yours and you don't really wanna do a template, but you're also not super confident in editing. So I'm gonna start off by adding my thumbnail image this is a screenshot from my video the last youtube tutorial that i made on this channel click the adjust part i'm gonna mess around with little highlights and shadows i recommend doing this as opposed to messing around with the brightness because that can peak a lot and create these types of really bright whites that you don't really want in your thumbnail but if the image is super dark you can just lift up the shadows that gives it an overall more brighter look be careful though because putting the shadows really high and the highlights really low that just kind of gives it a very flat image look as you can see here so just kind of mess around with it but also be wary that your image still needs some sort of dimension, even if you don't want the whites and blacks to peak. If you're super new to editing, I suggest you only mention with a colors panel, so that's saturation, hue, and temperature. For this picture, for example, I'm gonna bring up the saturation a little bit. I'm gonna bring the temperature a slightly bit up. I'm gonna change the hue, being very careful, because even the slightest movement can make your picture look like this. Because the picture is looking really flat, I'm gonna increase the contrast by a little bit. If you're a little bit more advanced, let me introduce you to the HSL panel, and this is where you can click on certain colors that are in your image and completely alter what color it is. Like I said, I don't really think that's taking away much from the thumbnail. And when I'm finally happy with my image, I'm gonna move on to the next section, which is adding text. Not all thumbnails include text. As I said before, there's a big trend of just using a screenshot from your video with no text. And that's like giving mysterious girl vibes. The thing about using Pixar again is that it's super user friendly if you have just begun editing. So if you go on the text tab, there's a lot of 
pick a font to start off with or library where you can just click on already like existing templates which are super cool and i personally have used these quite a lot even though i i would consider myself a little bit <laughs> not to brag but i would consider myself a little bit of an editor sometimes you're just in a rush and you gotta go and you gotta make a thumbnail and these are just really easy and you don't really have to think about the design element of it However, if you do, again, want a little bit more of a customization, you just click on add text, right? Whatever your video is about, and then you can mess around with different fonts and shadows and all of that stuff. This is a thumbnail that I came up with. I think it works pretty well. Personally, I think that there is a little bit of a weird balance because all the text is on one side. But if I take out the text from this side, it's gonna look super empty. So what I'm gonna be doing is going on the stickers tab and using two stickers that I think are gonna fit here. These two stickers, I think they go well with my video. There are two things that I mentioned. I'm not adding anything that's gonna be clickbaity. There's nothing about this video that you're gonna see the thumbnail and you're gonna expect that won't be covered in the actual video. So when this is done, you just click export and save and there you go, there's your thumbnail. Well, I hope you enjoyed and if you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you have a YouTube channel, let me know down below in the comments how you create your thumbnails. Subscribe if you haven't already because the next video in this series, I will be covering how you can edit your YouTube videos also using Pixar. Did you know that? Did you know you could do that? Follow us on Instagram, Twitter and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>